Satan. We might conclude that after all was said and done, Achilles was really a homebody at heart, but the lure of fame, glory, success got the better of him. The image of success and being a war hero in ancient Greece certainly signified success. This triumphed over a life that he never really had a chance to experience, although indications were he might have well preferred a far more simple life. The overriding question may be, how well do we really and truly understand our own character? It only stands to reason, then, that the kind of life we want depends on who we are, our character. And so the need to be self-aware becomes paramount in making life decisions. Now, I'm not going to stand here and proclaim the old, you know, know thyself, but it surely helps to be a little more circumspect, not only about knowing who we are, but the implication that holds for our decision-making. For example, many in our society will forego a satisfying life, as only they can define it themselves, forego a satisfying life in order to succeed whatever that image holds for them. The image of one's life becomes more valued than following the dictates of one's heart. Tied to this conundrum is the notion of accomplishment. The scale by which we measure success is gauged by what we have accomplished. In the case of Achilles, capturing 23 towns is quite an accomplishment. Being a top-level manager for a large corporation, living in a swank suburb is also quite an accomplishment, which spells success in every conceivable way. But what holds meaning? And what do we really want out of life? I have little doubt that for some people, the way their character is formed, opting for success with its attending accomplishments is the right pursuit. But I also believe that many of us, as it was for Achilles, a little anxiety is produced about which is the best path to take. With a deep sigh, we regret that somehow we must choose. Another ancient Greek, Aristotle, identified the anxiety stemming from the choices before us. He noted that our happiness was comprised of many desired ends, not just one. If options were reduced to just this or that, well, life would be easy. But there are so many contradictory claims. People may go mad seeking success, but at the same time, they fear that attaining success will mean losing their soul. Howard Stevenson from the Harvard Business School makes a great observation. He says, life is overextended and undersatisfying. Let me repeat that. Life is overextended and undersatisfying. So many targets, so little time. Or as our reading implied this morning, we opt for the jet boat and forgo the kayak because there is so little time. Well, there's this mortality thing again. Unlike the gods, we have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And we just go around once. And so different variables pull and push against each other where decisions have to be made in a rather short time frame. For example, we all face the push-pull experience of wanting to make a difference in this world and also having family happiness and harmony. I remember reading a while ago an interview with Pete Seeger. Despite all his success, and certainly making a difference in the world, he mourns the fact that child rearing was left almost entirely to his wife. In some sense, he lost his children by trying to save the world. What compelled him? 
what compelled Achilles. Perhaps a better comparison with Achilles may be David Petraeus, a modern-day warrior, and I guess a bit of a ladies' man himself. Much public sentiment has gone out to his wife, not only because of his infidelity, but because as a warrior, he was always away from home, fighting battles. She alone raised the kids. And I would not at all be surprised if at some tormented moment in Petraeus' life, sitting very temporarily in the comforts of his home and hearing the call to battle, he said, I am torn between these conflicting ideals, and yet I must choose. I think an important lesson from all this is taking seriously the fact that life is too short to strive for power and glory and the image of success at the expense of forsaking that which really holds meaning for us. We are all aware of the conflicting impulses. You know, honestly, sometimes we want to go at life as a warrior and reap material rewards. Jet boating can be thrilling, and we might want to try it. But this does not preclude the draw of white water rafting, a striving for the intrinsic rewards we seek that come from discovering what, what really matters most to us. I see the story of Achilles as a signal that we really need to be more self-aware by challenging some of our deepest assumptions about how one ought to live, we begin to understand that a meaningful life requires more than material accumulation. And also by being a bit more circumspect, we might discover what success really means and how we ought to go about pursuing it. This harkens back to the first question I proposed. How ought we to live? We know that there's a balance somewhere in all of this. Now, how do we find this necessary balance? No one moves seamlessly through the choices they confront. Like Achilles, we are mortal and vulnerable. We carry within us both a divine spark and human foibles. Our lives are lived in the balance between warrior and family between making a mark on the world and honoring a commitment to those we love. In 1980, when my firstborn was about eight weeks old, I remember sitting on a chair placing my daughter lengthwise on my lap and we just stared at each other trying to figure one another out. And suddenly, the phone rang, and it was the UUA, Unitarian Universalist Association headquarters, calling me from the president's office. Gene Pickett was president at the time. And I was told, this goes to show you how far back this is, I was told that Gene felt I was a promising young minister, and he wanted me to serve on what was called at that time the Committee on Committees. Wow, what an opportunity. I would serve the UUA, receive national exposure, and the rungs on the ladder would be easy to climb. I asked, yeah, my daughter's still on my lap. I asked, how much travel is involved? Three weeks a year was the response. I heard the offer, and I gazed at my daughter, and I thought, this is difficult, and yet I must choose. Can we turn our hymn books, please, to number 348. <laughs> 